once the home of great emperors, Rome is now an open-air museum. Everywhere you turn, there's a fountain, a church or a square to gaze upon. But more than that, Rome gives you the Dolce Vita feeling. It is indeed as beautiful as you imagine it, and more. And before you pack, remember, anything you want, Rome has got it. and uh, the emperor would watch from over there. probably the most iconic place in Rome and it took about 30 years to complete. Every person who comes here drops a coin. It's about 80,000 euros in coin every month. The big winner, the Red Cross. If you throw one coin in the, in the fountain, you'll come back to Rome. And that's what I'll do later. But uh, if you want to throw the second coin, they say you'll marry a beautiful Roman girl. I won't do that because probably my beautiful wife will really mind. One cannot come to Rome and miss ground zero of Catholicism, Vatican City. Actually, in Vatican City there are two different sites. Uh, one is St. Peter's Square with uh, St. Peter's Church and on the other side there is uh, the Vatican Museums with the world famous Sistine Chapel. The Vatican museums are filled with artwork from all the ages of humankind, from ancient Greek statues to contemporary art, with the Sistine Chapel being the superstar of the museum. With 6 million visitors a year, this is the sixth most visited museum in the world. We're 
about to enter St. Peter's Chapel. And this is the holy door and it's open once every 25 years, so it's a real privilege to be here and to enter. Let's go. Catholic tradition says that St. Peter's Basilica is the burial site of St. Peter, one of the Christ's disciples and the first pope. St. Peter's tomb is supposed to be right under the altar. One of the most beautiful Renaissance sculpture, Michelangelo Spieta is housed here. Michelangelo carved it when he was only 23 years old. It is the only sculpture Michelangelo ever signed, carving his name on Mary's sash. We are on top of St. Peter's Church in Vatican and we are about to go on top of the dome and from there we can see the whole Rome and uh, we just uh, took a break have some refreshments because there's a long, long road ahead. Even though the panoramic view will be worth the 320 steps climb, think twice before you start, as the spiral staircase gets progressively narrow and you can't turn back, as it's a one-way climb. So this is uh, Piazza di Spagna, we're uh, right at the steps of the Montana della Barcaccia, which was uh, of course uh, designed by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. There is the Spanish Embassy that gives the name to this place, the Spanish Square. Few tourists notice that John Keats Memorial House is on the right of the Spanish Steps. The famous English poet arrived here hoping that the seaside air will cure his illness but only lived here for the last months of his life. The current restoration project of the Spanish Steps cost 1.5 million euros and it's paid for by luxury jeweler Bulgari.
imagine that 2000 years ago here was a huge racing track for chariots. Now it is a charming square and the perfect place for you to experience the Italian's favorite activity, the Dolce Farnia. The fountain of the four rivers represents the four major rivers of the four continents known at the time. The Ganges for Asia, the Nile for Africa, Rio de la Plata representing America and the Danube for Europe. In the middle of the fountain, it is an ancient Egyptian obelisk surmounted by a dove with an olive twig, the Pamphili family emblem. Ponte Fabrizio right here is the oldest bridge in Rome. It was built in 62 before Christ and it's over 2000 years old. It connects the eastern bank of the Tiber River with the Isola Tiberina. As you cross the bridge, you stumble upon the charming neighborhood of Trastevere. about 2000 years ago and uh, imagine that a few emperors swam over here and uh, of course all the members of senate and uh, the nobility in ancient Rome used to come here at this spa and have fun and they had also a library and they had entertainers it was a country club of uh, the Roman age After antiquity and then uh, the Renaissance and Baroque, the third glorious period of the Italian people was the end of the 19th century. Uh, they were reunited under King Vittorio Emanuele II. Uh, his monument is here and there's also the monument of the unknown soldier. The Italians are not quite fond of the ardor of the fatherland, calling the building the typewriter or the wedding cake. Right next to the Venice Square, there's Emperor Trajan's Forum with the majestic 38 meters Trajan's Column. 